Uh, well, my dear students, now we are going to start a new topic under technology of metal forming course. The topic is on uh, powder metallurgy, forming with the help of powder metallurgy root, alright. So, we have divided the whole series of lecture for powder metallurgy in two parts. In first part, we are going to explain how do you form with the help of metallic powders, different products. And in the second part, more details on the product development of a using powder metallurgy would be delivered, alright. So, the powder metallurgy, what is powder metallurgy? See the, you are using powders, metallic powders for producing different varieties of products. So, the, the process powder metallurgy it is a process, it is a process of compacting metal powder in suitable dyes and sintering them, because first you have to put the powders in suitable dye and you have to apply some kind of load, so that the compact is formed. This compact generally it is uh, said as green compact and then it is to be sintered, so that the ease, uh, each uh, metallic powder gets fused and it, it forms a, a solid product. The powder metallurgy process, uh, it is also called as a net shape part of a fairly complex shape. So, it is a net shape forming process it is also another way it is said, because whatever powder you are putting it in the dye, the whole thing will be compacted and there is nothing left out of that. So, you can produce fairly complex shape very economically with this process and uh, uh, also the competitive, it is quite competitive in the manner with the casting forging processes and machining processes, because there is no need of rework, there is no need of machining, there is no need of any material loss after the product is formed by this particular route. As far as the dimensional control is concerned, we get, one can get a very good dimensional accuracy and size. Uh, uh, you can also get like the very good dimensional accuracy uh, from balls for ball point pen as well. So, the ball point pen you see it is 0.5 uh, mm diameter. So, for even such a small accuracy which is produced by you can have a very good dimensional control not only from the ball for the uh, ball pen, uh, you can have a part uh, weigh, weighing around 200 pounds also. So, a, that means, a very larger uh, part can also be produced with powder metallurgy. Look at this figure, where uh, the method of producing uh, powder metallurgy process is explained. 
So, the as I said the metallic powders are used. So, first thing is the method to make fine metal powders and uh, sort them and sorting according to the size. So, that is a very important issue. So, once you have the metal powder of given size, you can mix this powder to get an alloy. So, any alloy the you know for an alloy this percent of this particular powder, this percent of this particular powder if you mix it you get an alloy. So, the second method is to mix the powder to get an alloy like uh, iron alloy mo, uh, is most common and also the bronze alloy is very common. So, if you choose for a particular iron alloy and you choose the powder accordingly aluminum, magnesium, iron and all those things and mix it together and form the process of compaction and sintering you will get the an alloy. The first that means in the method first step is to find the fine metallic powder and sort it out. Secondly, you mix this powder to get the alloy and then third is the compaction as I said. You have to compact it in a press. So, usually powder is pressed into a green compact as I said. So, if you make a compact whatever product comes out that is called as a green compact. Usually, you require 20,000 to uh, 1 lakh psi pressure to make a green compact. And uh, even though with such a high psi pressure you apply to form green compact, you still get a very porous green compact and that may have around 70 percent as the density. So, and uh, it may be done cold or warm right so the process of the compaction sometimes it can be done cold sometimes it can be done warm with uh, uh, within a dye and uh, so usually when you perform uh, cold you get around 70% density but when you perform in hot condition or warm condition rather you get a higher density that means more than 70 percent. Once you have got a green compact usually the sintering is performed because the green compacts have uh, the, the, the metallic powders close together the wires are very small, but still they have not fused. So, once you sinter they used to you can see the figure here where a, a electron micrograph uh, is shown of a thermal bonded product and uh, you can see the, the particle size and very small and how they have made the compact and is still it is not is fused. So, sintering that means when you perform sintering means it is a controlled atmosphere and there is no oxygen. So, sintering is always done uh, within controlled atmosphere because if oxygen is there it may react. So, uh, non oxygen environment under controlled atmosphere the sintering is done. Generally uh, the, the green compact is heated to around uh, uh, 0.75 multiplied by melting temperature of the alloy. So, the heated 2.75 multiplied by the melting temperature of the alloy and uh, at this temperature uh, what happens the particles bind together. So, they fuse together and get make a bond and uh, but no doubt the part will shrink in size slightly because the once uh, it gets fuse the, the, the pores would be reduced and the density will increase up to 95 percent. And uh, because you know the strength is directly proportional to density. So, on the green compact if you say it is 70 
percent is density, so you have a strength, but when after sintering you get around 95 percent density, so the strength will go increased, right. So, this is what is the very simple way for producing a metal uh, powder products. As far as you compare in the beginning as I, as I said, if you compare the powder metallurgy products with casting process, because casting is also very popular. So, the comparison can be like the mass produce uh, is small steel parts uh, you can produce and uh, as far as the casting is concerned, the mass production of the steel part can be done with powder metallurgy and that is in terms of the net shaping right. And that is how with powder metallurgy process if you compare with the casting it is less wastage, there is almost no wastage. Uh, and uh, the, you form usually an alloy with uh, powder metallurgy. The range of densities, porosities uh, are certain advantages or disadvantages you can have, because you may have a variation um, in the density and porosity. So, and but you that is how you do the sintering, so that these flaws you are able to remove. And uh, you know in the sintering process and uh, overall powder metallurgy process, forming process, you require less energy as compared to the other forming processes. But the smaller parts and less complexity part like for, for example, 2.5 D seed form part is very difficult to produce with powder metallurgy. Okay. So, uh, no doubt the ball pen balls are produced with uh, uh, metallurgy, powder metallurgy root, but less than that say 0 0.5, less than 0 0.5 mm or so, it is very difficult to make with powder. And similarly, the seed form where the any product having the thickness to be very small, that is also very complex to make with uh, this process. So, you can see on the right side, there are some of the products like you have uh, gears and which is gears are very common and uh, you see it is net shaped gears, uh, the, the shape and the cutting of the gears you are able to avoid it, machining you are avoiding and that the therefore, the timing lot of timing you save and you can see the example here. So, as far as uh, the size of the particle is concerned within the center, uh, uh, this powder metallurgy, as I said when you form an alloy, the size may be different, the size of different composition of the metal powder to form an alloy, it may be different. If you see the range of the particle size, you can see this micrograph. There are very small size particle as well and there are very bigger size particle as well and uh, you can see here. So, it happens that is the usual and because of the this difference in the particle size only, there is a slightly porous appearance uh, comes out on these products. So, you can see the, the, the appearance of a product which is formed with this kind of particle size, which is very common in uh, metal form products, metal powder form products. Uh, very the metal powder metallurgy root is very very common as far as the cutting tools are produced. You can look here the cutting tools uh, where you use surmets cutting tools. Uh, there you have a ceramic kind of thing and metal composition. So, cermet is a ceramic and metal composite. You mix the powders of ceramic powders and uh, metallic powder, you form a, a good composition and then you accordingly, uh, you can see the cermet cutting inserts for the lathe uh, 
uh, operations. Most of the cutting tools of cermets are very popular, which is produced by powder metallurgy roots. Uh, there is another example where if you see the microstructure of the, the ceramic particle in the metal matrix which is shown here, it is very finely mix the, the ceramic particle uh, and the metallic powder to form a ceramics. On the other hand, the second example where you have the ceramic tipped saw blade for very long life you can see here. So, that is another example. So, you see the manufacturing with the compacts and all that proper dye, it is it has become so easier and uh, less time consuming and having a very good quality of the products being produced with powder metallurgy root. Uh, as far as uh, if you compare the the conventional forging process and uh, the forging of powder metal blanks. So, you will find that uh, the composition of uh, conventional forging and the, the forging of a powder metallurgy reform to produce a gear blank for an example, if you take our gear. So, moving left to the right, if you see the top sequence uh, shows uh, the shear stock, uh, which is upset section and it is force uh, blank uh, and the exterior and the interior is scrap associated with conventional forgings. The finished gear is generally uh, machined from the blank with additional generation of scrap. Right. So, uh, the bottom pieces are the powder metallurgy, if you follow uh, root, and when you perform uh, the gears are formed with the proper dye, and uh, this does not have any scrap, and uh, therefore you can compare that the forging conventional forging process and uh, with the powder uh, forging process, powder preform forging process, it is a lot of saving is concerned without loss of the accuracy. On the other hand, this figure shows the powder metallurgy forge connecting rod and uh, this have been produced by uh, in, in numbers in millions. Okay. So, that is how the powder metallurgy, uh, it compares very well with the conventional forging processes of the bigger size products like your gears and the connecting rod here. And you know there is no compromise on the, on the, the strength and the life of the product when you produce it by powder metallurgy root. So, that is a very good point to be noted here. So, whatever we have uh, seen so far, one again let us uh, recall. So, we can put it the basic steps in the powder metallurgy process. If you look this a kind of table presentation, where uh, so you require for powder metallurgy process, what you require? You require some kind of raw material. So, the raw material is in the form of uh, to make a, an alloy actually. So, you require metal powders and, uh, and so that you make an alloy and uh, you require certain additives also along with the powder like graphites or dye lubricants etcetera. So, that you mix with the, these alloy powders, these additives like graphites and dye lubricants. So, that you can pour the whole lump of the raw material including the metal powders and additives. So, that it is easy to fill the dye and it is easy to um, uh, make the compact. So, these two things that is the metal powders and additives you mix it first. So, once you mix 
you may follow uh, then after the forming process. So, how do you compact? So, the second step is after mixing you have to make the compacts. So, how do you make the compacts? So, there are three different ways for making compact like as I said the hot compaction one can go, one can go for the warm compaction and uh, one can go also for the cold compaction. Usually when you go for the forming to make the compacts, so in hot if you follow the hot compaction route you may choose isostatic process, you may choose extrusion process, you may choose die compaction process, you may also choose spraying process through the hot compaction route. You may use pressurized uh, sintering as well. So, these are the routes that is isostatic, extrusion, die compaction, spraying, pressureless sintering etcetera. Uh, these may fall in hot compaction route. Warm compaction as I said it is between the hot compaction and cold compaction. Uh, you may go for the die compaction and you may also go for the injection molding process. Right. So, in cold compaction the die compacting, uh, cold compaction is very popular as I said uh, you do not require any heating. So, in cold compaction usually die comp compaction may be followed, isostatic compaction, rolling can be used, uh, injection molding can be used and then the slip casting can be used and cold forming is also used for uh, cold compaction method. So, once the, the forming of by uh, forming to get a, a compact uh, is concerned these by these processes as I said you require to sinter it. So, so sintering when you do there are two kind of sintering one which we call as the atmospheric sintering where you require uh, oxygen less sintering process and the another where you have vacuum sintering. So, you require uh, vacuum, you perform the sintering in vacuum. There are many other apart, once you get the sintering, then after that also there are certain op, uh, optional operations like uh, you may call it as the operation, uh, optional manufacturing steps, like uh, you may go for the repressing you may go for uh, coining process, you may go for the sizing process and uh, you may even go for the recentering to make it much more strength. You may go for uh, forging process, you may go for uh, re-rolling process and also you may go for metal infiltration process. So, uh, these are some of the optional operations after the sintering. So, the optional manufacturing steps as I said and then there could be the optional finishing steps as well as. So, like machining and then heat treating, the steam treating, the plastic impression, impregnation, you may go for the plating, you may go for the tumbling, you may go for the oil impregnation you may go for the short pinning. So, these uh, one can say as the optional finishing steps after sintering. So, after uh, if you perform the optional uh, operations you will then get the finished product. So, so finished product means there is no defect. So, as you know uh, how to ensure that there is no defects we will see later the defects common defects in powder metallurgy uh, in the next. Usually the parts that are being produced by a powder metallurgy route uh, sometimes when you produce self 
uh, lubricating bearings which is impregnated with oils. So, this is also very example when you produce self lubricating bearings impregnated with oil, when you break pads with embedded ceramic uh, fibers, when you machine make machine tool cutting instruments like ceramics, uh, ceramic metals and uh, higher heat absorption components you produce. You also uh, with metal powder root uh, generally commonly made out with uh, of iron when you it is concerned. So, there are many such varieties which is made out of iron, copper, aluminum, tin and nickel. right? So, these are the large varieties of part that we have now seen can be produced with uh, this root. Uh, as far as the order of operation is concerned, uh, you know as I said you, you, you require uh, powder production. So, the question is how do you produce good powders, then how do you blend these powders and then how do you compact these powder and then sintering and then the finishing operation. So, as far as the order of operation is concerned, it is starts with the powder production, it is starts with the blending those powders or mixing those powders and then making compaction, sintering and finishing that we have already seen. So, let us see one by one uh, these. So, how do you produce powders? So, powders size are of micron size, it may be sometimes 100 micron, 400 micron, 50 micron. So, how do you produce such a fine powder and that too with good quality. Uh, so, virtually any metal can be made into powder form, this is quite true any metal. So, whether it is a stainless steel whether it is uh, titanium. So, virtually any metal can be made into powder form. So, there are three principal methods by which uh, metallic powders are commercially produced, each of which involve energy input to increase the surface area of the metal. All right. So, out of this number one method to produce the powder is atomization. So, atomization involves the uh, conversion of uh, molten metal into a spray of droplets that solidify into powder. Right? So, it is the most versatile and popular method for producing uh, metal powder today. Right. Usually, uh, one can have gas atomization, one can have water atomization as well as. So, when you choose the gas atomization in which a high velocity gas steam is utilized to atomize the liquid metal, whereas in water atomization route a high velocity water stream is used uh, instead of air. So, as far as the chemical uh, uh, so the atomization is the way. Second method is the chemical electrolytic process you can produce powder this is another way. So, in chemical electrolytic process and uh, electrolytic cell is you, is set up uh, in the form of uh, elect, uh, cell. So, an electrolytic cell is set up in which uh, the source of the desired metal is the anode. Okay. So, the anode is uh, slowly dissolved uh, under an applied voltage and uh, it is transported through the uh, electrolytic uh, electrolyte and uh, it is deposited on the cathode. 
right. So, uh, the deposit is then removed, then it is washed and dried to yield a metallic powder of a very high purity. So, chemical electrolytic process it, it is used to produce very high quality purity metal powders. In addition, mechanical methods are uh, occasionally used to reduce powder size. However, uh, these methods are much more commonly associated with ceramic powder production. When you produce ceramic powders, then you go for the metallic method, uh, mechanical way. So, you use balls, you use hammers and all that, so that you reduce the size, uh, powder size further. There is another way of uh, producing powder, we call it as a uh, comminution. So, comminution. So, comminution is a term used for uh, the technique for reducing particle size in ceramic processing and uh, deliver uh, mechanical energy in various forms. So, generally, two types of uh, comminution operations are distinguished. Number one, we call it as the crushing and another is called as grinding. So, what happens in crushing? So, the crushing, the reduction of large lump of a particle from, from say from mine to a smaller size for subsequent further reduction is done. Okay? So, several stages may be required. For an example, you require primary crushing, then you require secondary crushing and all those things. right? So, after crushing you require to grind it. So, the grinding is another process that refer to uh, the operation of reducing the small pieces after crushing to a fine powder. right? So, grinding is uh, accomplished by uh, abrasion and impact of the crushed mineral by the free motion of uh, unconnected hard media such as balls, pebbles or rods. Right? So, when you use uh, the way whether you use ball, pebbles and all that. So, one can go for the ball mill. So, in ball mill you have hard is, uh, uh, spheres uh, mixed with the rock, uh, is stock a kind of uh, uh, the stock of the, the ores and all that whatever are uh, that is to be commutated uh, or rotated inside a large cylindrical container. So, and there are number of hard sphere balls of different size and they once they, ro they rotate. So, these stock material in the form of uh, bigger size will be grinded. In case of roller mill, uh, the, these stock is compressed uh, against a flat horizontal grinding table by rollers riding over the table surface right that is under roller mill in third case when we say the impact grinding uh, particles of a stock uh, are thrown against a hard flat surface either uh, in high velocity air steam or in a high steam slurry form so the impact will fracture the pieces into smaller particles and that is how we call it the impact grinding. So, these are the some different ways of grinding. Then the second phase is uh, once you have got the powders uh, by these way different varieties, how do you blend it? Blending means mixing. So, blending means mixing several powders of different size. Okay. So, because the powders, 
so you have to bind it. So, blending you require a dry lubricant or an uh, antioxidant for uniform compaction. So, generally this is done carefully to avoid uh, explosion sometimes. So, you have to choose a proper dry, uh, dry lubricant or uh, antioxidant and uh, you have to put mix with the all those things uniformly to form a uniform compaction. So, the blending, uh, blending of all the things uh, can add you require some kind of lubricant. So, uh, why you put the lubricant? Because once you blend with the help of some antioxidant, it should not stick with the mold wall. So, to avoid the sticking with the mold wall, you have to add additional lubricant. And uh, to and also the purpose is that the green strength is enough. So, you can add binders for that. So, once you add some kind of binder, so that the green strength is big uh, better and uh, then you can add sintering adds also like some kind of acceleration of uh, densification upon heating. So, that can also be done. So, and the sintering add like uh, you some kind of uh, chemicals, some kind of you would discuss. So, that the acceleration of densification upon this heating can be achieved. So, that is how you can add some sintering add also. After it is blended, you require to compact as I said. So, compaction that means uh, bringing the, the, the materials into required shape, we call it is the compaction. That means, uh, the work part, whatever you have after pressing, that is called as green compact. The word green means not yet fully processed, that is the purpose of green compact. So, you require brick quitting, that means, uh, you require to compression of the powder uh, in the die cavity from both the top and bottom, that is called as brick quitting. Second method, you can follow the roller compaction, where uh, compacted, which is compacted between two rollers to produce sheet or plate stock, right. So, you, you have two rollers and you in between you may put the powders and then it will be made as compact. So, there are ways to do that. The third way that is popular for making compact is the extrusion compacting. So, in case of in, uh, extrusion compacting, powders are packed into a, a mild steel tube and then it is forced through a die, it is very forced through a die at a high speed. Uh, if you recall a very popular way of uh, extrusion, the making of uh, uh, welding rods, the coating of the uh, slag, uh, the material uh, over the welding rod is done with the extrusion compaction process. Then you come to the sintering. As I said repeatedly, the after the compact is made by these three different routes, either of these three different routes, one can go for the sintering. And uh, uh, so, the sintering is a process of heating. As I said, uh, the compressed powder metal to within around 70 to 90 percent of its melting point, as I said. Usually, 0 0.75 is very popular, but in, in nutshell, it, it is around 70 to 90 percent of its melting point, you take the sintering temperature. Often, uh, it is called as solid state sintering or solid phase sintering, 
because the metal remains unmelted and that is how the name appeared. Uh, 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 people call it as a solid state sintering or solid phase sintering. Then the second uh, it is used sintering is used for material such as ceramics as well as and cements uh, that cannot be melted and cast by and it and uh, it can be cast by other way right so uh, these are the two different ways the sintering in fact involve mass transport to create the necks and transform them into the grain boundaries right so the principal mechanism by which this occur uh, is diffusion so, in the decentering a very popular process is diffusion. So, the other possible mechanism include plastic flow as well. So, sintering uh, where the heat treatment may also consist. So, the heat treatment consists of the three steps during the sintering like the preheat in which lubricant and binders are uh, burned off and uh, then it is sintered and then cool it down. So, that is a, uh, a kind of uh, heat treatment may also be there. So, in the form of preheating and then, then, then you require the finished or sintered parts. So, after finished and sintered part you require secondary operation as I said if you recall the earlier slide. So, in the secondary operation that is uh, done for the uh, densification and sizing purpose. So, secondary operations are performed for densification and sizing. So, you may require repressing that is the part is, uh, is squeezed in a closed die to increase density and uh, improve physical properties and then you may have a sizing that is the forcing the part through a, a finished die to provide dimensional accuracy. And then the coining, you require coining where the pressing details into the surface is required and then the fourth as the machining. So, the machining uh, require other thing. Uh, in usual case, uh, the infiltration and uh, impregnation is also required, where because the powder formed parts uh, can be very porous, it is very porous. Other materials can be placed in the wire therefore, to enhance the properties of the product. So, this is what is called as uh, infiltration and impregnation. So, this will lead to the prevents moisture penetration, then it will lower the frictional properties as well and uh, the infiltration also uh, pores are filled with a molten metal sometimes infiltration and uh, impregnation in case of impregnation, uh, impregnating the, the sintered part with oil uh, to create a self lubricating bearing. So, that is also a class uh, and that is how it is called as the impregnation. The advantage of uh, these uh, that is uh, the infiltration and impregnations are that you have the wide range of mechanical and physical properties available one can. The parts made from high melting point metals and uh, the high production rate on relatively complex parts are possible and uh, you require good dimensional control, you require very good dimensional control and uh, impregnating and infiltrating, uh, infiltrating is uh, another good advantage uh, when you use powder uh, metallurgy. The only limitation with uh, powder metallurgy is 
the size of the part, very small part it is very difficult and even the complexity of the shape of the part is also limited, very complex part where the powder is not able to reach while compaction, while as far as the green compact is made, is very difficult to produce. So, complex part it, uh, there is a limitation, a size is limitation and the high cost of the powder metal compared to the other materials. Sometimes the uh, as you go for the purity of the these powder metals, say if you go for the copper 99.99 percent, so it becomes very costly 99, uh, 97.34 percent it is all light, but once you go at the 99 percent the cost of the powder becomes very very high as compared to the usual metal. So, that is another limitation as far as uh, the powder cost is concerned. And uh, apart from that you require high tooling cost for your small production runs as well as because whether you produce 10 piece or 100 piece usually then you have to produce the whole die and other tooling. So, for a small production run the high cost of the toolings are very high and uh, as far as the strength is concerned you have you are going to get lower strength and ductility than the forging one forging. So, that is another limitation as the strength is concerned if you compare with the forged one. So, these are the some of the slides that I wanted to show you where the porous metal you there is another route when you require to make the porous alloy there is another area these porous alloy metallic alloy are now popular to make it uh, bridges and all that over uh, sea and all that so that is the floating kind of thing and also these porous metals are becoming popular to reduce the weight and very high strength as well as because these pores are made in a very programmed way. So, uh, first the weight is light and it has a very good tremendous absorption, shock absorbing and so in mot uh, automobiles and all that these porous metals are becoming popular day by day and which is made by powder metallurgy route right. So, this is another slide where the oil pregnant, uh, impregnated porous bronze bearings are shown. So, so it, it acts as a self lubricating bearings as, as I said. This is another example where uh, the connecting rods has been made with powder and on the right side you have uh, the, the powdered metal transmission gear. So, you know the the kind of strength require in transmission gear. So, if it is possible to produce with these powders. Uh, usually the uh, warm compaction method uh, one can go for 1650 ton presses like for this uh, because these both cases connecting rod and the transmission gear are made by warm compaction method uh, using some kind of 1650 ton presses and the uh, teeth are uh, molded with very close dimensional and that is how uh, these are molded to net shape and there is no need of machining afterward. Usually the ultimate tensile strength is found to be 1,55,000 psi and uh, thus if you see these parts. Uh, the costs as if you compare with the original forged parts usually 30 percent cost saving over the original uh, forged parts are produced. So, that that makes the beauty of this particular process powder metallurgy. This is another example where uh, the powder uh, metal turbine blades having a disc bigger size and it is a single piece. So, you see the complexity. So, this is what is the powder uh, 
metal turbine blade this single piece has been made. So, uh, this shows that even very complex parts are being now produced. So, uh, this is what some of the things I, I wanted to share with you the basic details of uh, a powder metallurgy root, how do you form, how do you uh, form complex part, what are the methods and uh, it is interesting to note that way is for the smaller pieces also and for medium size complexity parts and but this case if you see which is produced with powder metallurgy root, uh, people may doubt whether uh, it is so complex to produce, right. So, uh, in the second lecture we would further continue to discuss on the powder metallurgy. I thank you all for your kind patience and uh, I would once again request you to give your valuable feedback uh, for future improvement. So, thank you, thank you very much all of you, thank you.